Good morning. We're having technical difficulties in my studio today. My tripod broke. <clears throat> so I'm trying to get it figured out. <sighs> the problems that we have. It's a beautiful day. Uh, looks to be just a tad breezy. It's hard to tell here in town. So, but good morning. Glad you guys are getting on here. Betty and Susan, hope you're feeling better. Wayne, pray for you, brother. Hope you're doing all right. Mr. Dennis, <clears throat> Deanna, Dennis, Amy, thank you for the eggs, Amy. Appreciate that. <clears throat> All right, well, it is uh, Wednesday. Get through Wednesday, we're on the downhill slide of things for the week, right? <clears throat> so, yes, we, uh, uh, I don't know why, I, I read the, I read the, uh, I got that app for Fort Morgan Times on my phone, so I read that every once in a while. It, it's such a, I'm sorry, but it's just become such a liberal hack also. But a um, couple of things. I don't know if you saw Tri-State uh, Electric is uh, getting ready to take a huge jump into the, uh, the what, the renewable uh, energy. So solar mainly, I guess. So uh, getting ready to... You know, the, one of the coal plants in Craig, they were going to shut down in 2029. Now they're talking about shutting it down in 2028. So they are, uh, I, I don't know what it's going to do to Craig. Uh, those power plants, I heard both of them, I think, maybe are going under. <clears throat> so I don't know, um, but uh, we can... We can be encouraged by the gaslighting going on in our state uh, politicians. Uh, another article in Fort Morgan Times is that Colorado has avoided uh, the recession. And so what recession? I, I didn't know we were in any recession anywhere in the country. Nobody is saying that. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember when uh, George W. Bush was in, that was all they ever talked about was recession, re recession, recession, recession. And uh, it was not anything like it is today. And uh, now we're not in a recession. We're just paying three fifty dollars a gallon for gas. We're paying 8% uh, interest rates. We're, you know, we're, <laughs> we're paying... Uh, what, 25, 20, 25% more for food than uh, we did three years ago. Uh, you know, the the gaslighting of American people and even our local newspaper is astounding to me. So just, you know what, guys, if you're in the <clears throat> newspaper business, just report the news. Uh, quit trying to push your agenda. So uh, that HH... Um, Amazing to me. I still need to look more into that, but uh, they just dissected that HH, and these Democrats got what they wanted through it anyway. Uh, and they're punishing the American people, the the Coloradoans, but by uh, <clears throat> redistributing the uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, the the wealth. So. Whether you paid in a dollar in taxes in, in Colorado or whether you paid in a million dollars, we all get the same amount of money back. So that's just straight socialism. Uh, they did used to base it on, you know, how much you paid in. You get that percentage, you know, higher percentage back, which you ought to. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. <clears throat> but Democrats are very socialistic, and uh, our Democrats are actually communistic in, in their idea. They just would love to own everything. So, and you guys are economists, you know. Uh, how do you, when, when they start looking at uh, unemployment rates, they uh, said that Colorado was down, but the biggest hire, the, the biggest employer, 
is the government in in Colorado. So how you, you guys that are economists then how how can how can you even include the government uh, in the economy? Uh, I, I mean, as, as somebody that boosts the economy, it it makes no sense. You're you're robbing from Peter and giving to Paul, and uh, the, the government shouldn't even be allowed into what they do for the economy. They 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 rob from one and give to another. I mean, that's all that the government does. The, the government does not produce anything for the economy and they take from the economy and, and I, I don't I don't know I, I'm <clears throat> I, I don't know a whole lot about that but it sure doesn't make sense that <clears throat> anything on the government side of things ought to be included in the economy because they all they do is the, the government does not make any money the government only spends money so Always remember that, but it doesn't change what we need to be doing, right? So I I have my brand new Bible out again. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Highland goatskin from England. So a gift to me uh, from one of my church members and grateful for that. Uh, not sure where I'm going to use it yet. I'm using it here for a few days, but I don't know what I'll do with this one. It's great. Real easy to read too. So, but here's the thing. I, I I read first of all Psalm 125 today, and no matter what, <clears throat> and sometimes it does get a little challenging, right? When you you see the things going on, and, and especially our state, you know, uh, it, it uh, you, you just hate to see it going the way that it's going. You know, pretty soon we're going to be just like Oregon, where you know people are burning things down in the streets and. Uh, insanely liberal, and and we're we're right there, but you know, and and it can kind of drag you down. But um, I don't think we ought to move and leave and and bail out of here. I think somebody needs to stand up against this and and keep preaching the truth, and and that's what we ought to do, right? And and God tells us this in Psalm one twenty five: They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. You know, let, let our faith be one that is unmovable, unshakable, unflappable, and we just keep doing what, what God tells us to do and, and live that way and, and stand strong in, in those things. And, and, uh, and he goes on, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. Now, I, I know that that he's talking about uh, Israel in in this, and and but the principle still lies for all of his people and and all of his children and those that have have called on Christ to be their savior. You are part of the family of God, and God is not going to turn aside from you. He's not going to turn his back on you, and and he has us right where he wants us, and so now let's be used by him. To, to do what we need to do, right? And he goes on, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Okay, so here we need to understand that whatever takes place in our lives and however bad it gets, God is allowing that to happen. And God can stop it whenever he wants to, right? Lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. So here it is. If you want bad things, then start acting badly. Well, that's not, all right? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. So be careful where you hit your wagon, right? And and uh, let's be careful of, of letting the world impact us or affect us in ways it shouldn't. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. So... Uh, <clears throat> and and for such as turn aside under their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. So, and, and then he goes on talking about the peace of Israel, but peace shall be upon Israel. You you want peace in your life? Then live righteously. And and, and I'm not talking about, it may not be peaceful uh, physically in, in those around you, you, you may have those that challenge you and, and those that are violent against you. And that's probably going to get worse as, as, uh, that's just 
normal. I mean, that's not just this day and age. That's just going to happen. It's just going to continue to get worse and worse. So we know that, but we just keep doing what we ought to be doing, right? And, and be careful of how we deal with that. Look in Proverbs 29. This is a good warning uh, to us also. And, and I think we need to re- remember this sometimes when, when we want to get in arguments with someone. And it says this, If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Look, you know, sometimes it's just like banging your head against the wall and they're, they're, you just don't do it. You know, that that's what he's saying here. You, if you contend with a foolish man, then um, you, you can answer a foolish man, you know, in his folly, as it says, but, uh, you know, leave it there and move on. I, I mean, there are times when we waste so much time and... And really, you know where most of that is? It's right there on social media where you want to argue with some fool on there. And and then it gets you all worked up. And then you're on there all day long checking it and responding and defending. And, you know, and it's just not worth it. So uh, be careful of that. And then also understand that it, it is a wicked day. It says the bloodthirsty hate the upright. And, and so let's make sure... Just what we were looking at yesterday in in First John, let's make sure that we're loving people as we ought to, okay? And and here the bloodthirsty hate the upright. Don't don't be that way. Don't don't be so angry at people that you lock yourself away and 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 don't spend time with others and and you uh, you, uh, you lock yourself in in some kind of a little hole somewhere. You're angry and you're bitter, so. Um, don't do that and, and let's love people like we ought to because then it says, but the just seek his soul. You know, we we need to, to go after people and, and in a kind way, in a loving way um, because God wants their heart and, and we need to tell them about the goodness of God and what Jesus has done for us. And, and uh, you can't do that if you're full of hatred, right? Well, then he goes on, and and here, this is a good one for all of us. A fool uttereth all his mind. <clears throat> How many times have we just went off on someone and said everything that we were thinking? <clears throat> you know what? There are some times where things just shouldn't be said. <laughs> Why? Because it goes on and it tells us this, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterward. All right. So how many have been guilty of the first part of that verse? (laughs) You know, we just, sometimes you think that Man, I'm going to tell him off, and you you rip into him, and you do that, and and and, and uh, <laughs> that's good, Dan. I gave more pieces of my mind than I own. Deficit spending, yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't you hate that? <clears throat> don't you hate after you do it? Then you're like. Oh. You know, and then you got to, you confess it to God. You got to get it right with the Lord. You got to, really, a lot of times you got to get it right with the one that you blew up on. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just not worth it, right? So let's, uh, let's be careful with some of those things and and let's guard and, you know, I mean, and and social media has, uh, Yes, then you have to apologize. That's the hard part. That's that's worse than telling telling off and the guilt you feel. It's then the apology that's got to come. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, and and devil knows that's a weakness in all of us, and that's why he goes after that so often, right? And so, got to get victory over that, and and just learn to not say everything that comes to your mind. So. Uh, be careful with that. And and then, I, I mean, look at this. Uh, it tells you the world that we're in. This is, human nature is human nature. It's all the same, right? And and uh, 
I, I don't get on Twitter either, eh? and I I got off of that, and and uh, I, I'm I'm on Instagram, but I hardly ever post anything on there either. I I just watch the funny reels, is what I do. <laughs> but you know, sometimes on Facebook, somebody will say something, and uh, I, I just. You know, I've gotten it pretty much to the point on my on my feed that those those that want to do that, I just unfriend them. I, I don't have time anymore. I I don't uh, it, it, you know or unfollow them if I'm chicken. You know, but either way, I get I get rid of them where I don't have to see them. I, I don't want any part of that. You know, um, it, it's just not worth it. You know, it's such a waste of time. So. Yes, I do send several reels to the family chat, too. Sorry, hon. <laughs> that's what Instagram is for. Uh, entertainment, that's it. <laughs> All right. But uh, but let's look at he, uh, Hosea 4. And just the first five verses here. But, it, you know, it, it it's just a description of the kind of world that we live in right now. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. You know, the first thing that jumped out at me when I read this, there, there is no truth, nor mercy, and, and nor knowledge of God in the land. First thing that came to my mind is we, we have work to do as believers, and, and there's no reason for that in, in this day and age that that we cannot get out the word to everyone, you know, and, and give them the truth. I, I was so encouraged Sunday. Uh, first of all, we had a great crowd Sunday. So everybody, I think, is getting over the sickness and junk. And so they were back. And and but then we have those Christmas tracks and and uh, I handed those out, you know, to people that would take those and hand them out, and and uh, we took like 350 of those Christmas tracts on Sunday that people are going to hand out. And and I think we could probably give away the rest of the, there was 500 of those tracts. Well, actually, we got 1,000, but I thought if we could at least get 500 of those into our community uh, before Christmas, and maybe we can get all 1,000 of them out. Wouldn't that be awesome, you know, to hand out those Christmas tracts and, and uh I don't know. It's just uh, exciting to see. I'm telling you, God, <clears throat> God blesses when when we are getting the word out and telling people about Christ. And and there's no better time than right now. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this is a month where many people will listen. And uh, you know, all you got to do is hand them that and say, "Hey, here's something for you," and and give that to them, and and just keep walking on, right? I mean, it's awesome. Just spread the word. The word of God can do something that 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 we can't do, and and just give them the word and and give them the knowledge of God. Because here, <clears throat> he said, there is no truth. Look, the truth is Jesus. The truth is His word. And and uh, I, I'm thankful that we have a community and, and a church that loves the community and is getting out the truth, right? And and show mercy to those that are around us. And, and it doesn't mean that we agree with their lifestyle or agree with everything that they're doing, but we can still love the people and love them to Jesus. I, I mean, there there used to be a time when when people chose an alternate lifestyle that they were really pretty much shunned. And and I just don't believe that's the correct way to handle these things. And we're going to deal with more and more of that as we go. And it doesn't mean that they come in and they are, you know, uh, Bible teachers and preachers, not at all. But they ought to be able to come in to a congregation that loves God and that loves them and that's willing to help them get out of their lifestyle that God does not endorse, that God doesn't want in their lives and help them to get where they need to be. Look, you ever given thought if you have a couple coming in that are just living together and never been married, that that's sin too. Why? Why in society do we say that that's okay? You know, I, I'm. I mean, we don't. We don't want that at all. You know, <clears throat> and so we, uh, we, we. But we still love them. 
I mean, why can we not love those that are in these alternate lifestyles? Uh, and so, yes, we need to stand and, and tell people the truth, but we need to learn to love people and show some mercy, right? And then he goes on and he says, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out and blood touches blood. I mean, blood's running on the street, right? Therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. All of nature is affected by that kind of sin. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. They, they want to argue with everyone is what he's saying. And so, uh, therefore shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy their mother. I'm telling you. That's exactly where we're at. And, and the way that God will stop this and, and, and show, uh, you, you know, and, and not bring judgment yet is by we as believers getting out there and sharing the truth with mercy and giving them the knowledge of God and, and stop doing the swearing and the lying and the killing and the stealing and committing adultery. I, you read that in Hosea and and one of the, the most wicked things that he kept repeating over and over and over was the the adulterous affairs of people. You know, there 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 just doesn't seem to be any kind of commitment with people today, whether it be a commitment with God, whether it be a commitment in their marriage, whether it be a commitment even with their family, no commitment with the church. Uh, I mean, there just is no commitment with anyone anywhere. And 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 the adultery is wickedly rampant uh, during the time of Hosea, but it also is today. And how we need to guard against those things. And and it just reminds me, Hosea here does of of how we need to <clears throat> be different, and we need to be willing to follow God and stand with God and, and and love God and love His Word and love people the way that we ought to and. And and we just got to be strong in that. And then I'll I'll end this with uh, <clears throat> going to Second John. And I, I I mentioned this yesterday, but I still find it very interesting. John, one of the sons of thunder, and obviously must have had quite a temper and and uh, probably quick to fight. I imagine he was a fisherman. He was probably a pretty rough kind of guy. And, and by the time he writes these, he's he's quite a bit elderly now. And, uh, Definitely a lot older than he was when he was running with Jesus. And uh, you, you find here that the biggest emphasis that he has is to love one another. Isn't that good? I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. It's just uh, <clears throat> you got somebody that was pretty rough. And now uh, in his later days, he sees the importance of how we ought to love one another. And look at this in Second John 5 through 8. And now I beseech thee, lady... And talking to to a, a, a body of believers, lady, okay, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And, and <clears throat> this is an agape love. This is a self sacrificial love. You know, we're we're <clears throat> we're in such a narcissistic society that everything is about me, 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 and and this is just the opposite. And he goes on, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. Let's obey him, right? This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many <clears throat> deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look, Jesus Christ is God and he came in the flesh, okay? He's the second person of the Trinity, Anybody that teaches that Jesus is anything other than God himself, it, they, they are a deceiver and, they, and really they're an antichrist. And so beware of that. If they teach anything other than Jesus Christ being God himself, right? And then he says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, those things that we've done, but that we receive a full reward. You know what I see in that? Don't let <clears throat> the attitude of this world, don't let the deceivers uh, affect you. Don't, don't let them, don't even let them get you down, okay? 
Don't, don't let this world get you down. It, it's a crazy world that we live in. Yes, it is. And and it's a challenging day that we're living in. But it, it, it'll it all come out in, in the wash and it will be okay. We just need to stay and remain faithful to God. And when we do that, we, we find that God gives us peace. He, he gives us instruction. He, he gives us wisdom. And, and God blesses our way and blesses our day, right? So... Let's get out there and tell tell others about Christ. And look, if you want some of those Christmas tracks, come and get them. You know, if you're there tonight at church, I'll give some more out. We got plenty. And we still got about 650 of them there if you want to give them out. <clears throat> and uh, let's tell somebody about Christ. And let's, uh, I don't know, it's just a, it's a joy to serve God, isn't it? It's a joy to serve him with you guys. So <clears throat> you guys stay out there, remain faithful. And uh, come on out tonight, 7 o'clock. We have teens. We have little kids. We have uh, adult Bible study prayer. Uh, it's just a powerful time and uh, love for you to be there. So God bless you guys. Let's have a great day. Lord willing, see you tomorrow.